Sunday school lesson for May the 24th, 2015. We are still studying from Unit 3 of One and the Bond of Love. One and the Bond of Love. Now this one we are talking about in the Bond of Love is those who have been born into the family of God and we make up the church, Jew and Gentile. We are one and we are bond. The word bond means cemented, uh, glue, stuck together, and uh, of love. And love here means uh, agape love, which means to have a desire for someone, to have a delight in someone, and denial of self for the good of somebody else, the unity that we have in this community of faith. Uh, the subject from the adult quarterly says, from nonsense to sense, from nonsense to sense. Sometime in life, uh, without a complete knowledge of a particular uh, situation or incident, it, the thing just doesn't seem to make sense. But once we became become more aware of the situation, then that nonsense really become uh, to make sense. So in our lesson this morning, uh, today, we are dealing with an incident that at first is not going to make sense to these people, but knowledge, okay? Have you ever bought a um, an item that you had to assemble, assemble it, and you look at it, you think you know how to put it together, and after you start working on it uh, without reading the instruction, and you say, wow, this just doesn't make sense. Then you go look at the instruction, and you have to undo what you have done and follow the instruction for it to make sense. Well, that's the way it is with studying the Word of God. Uh, we have to study it, allow the Spirit of God to teach us, because uh, man just cannot understand God's Word without the teaching of the Holy Spirit. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ said himself that he was going to go away and he was going to send us another comforter, he was going to be in us. He was going to be beside us. He was going to teach us and bring things back to our remembrance what he had taught. So therefore, it is the Spirit of God that teaches and makes sense in God's Word because the natural man just cannot understand it. Okay, it was spiritually, uh, man was inspired by the Spirit of God to write, and it takes the Spirit of God to make sense. Okay, now an unsaved person can understand the historical facts, but he cannot understand the spirit of things of God's Word. So, um, uh, as you look at this lesson and the uh, devotional uh, reading is from the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the uh, full chapter, verses uh, 32 through 40, we encourage you to read those verses and also along with that, read the 19th chapter of Leviticus because here in the book of Deuteronomy, the apostle, uh, John, uh, Moses was uh, reiterating to this uh, younger generation that uh, they had came out of the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness on the east banks of the Jordan River. And he is uh, uh, reciting to them, okay, the laws of God that uh, to those that were born in their 40 years in the, in the wilderness. And uh, here uh, it's talking about how the Lord uh, uh, spoke to man, uh, to Jews, uh, in the 19th chapter of uh, Leviticus. Fire, smoke. Uh, 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 light, mountain uh, shaking, and uh, this is the way God was uh, speaking, and we're going to find uh, this going to tie in with our lesson for today, okay, on the, uh, in the book of Acts, how uh, uh, the Spirit of God spoke to uh, these people, and they were able to speak languages that others could understand, and they had not studied those languages themselves. So anyway, read that and uh, the print from our lesson is taken from the book of Acts, the second chapter, uh, verses 1 through 7, then the 12th verse, and uh, 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, verses 13 through 19. And as look at the aim for studying this lesson, it says, Discover how the Holy Spirit helped people communicate and both uh, different uh, native and spiritual language. How the Holy Spirit help people to communicate. Now, keep in mind that uh, the Word of God, uh, the Bible, 
is uh, God communicating with man. And uh, therefore, when you study the Word of God, and whenever you communicate with someone, you learn things about that individual. They learn things about you. But here, okay, we learned about God, okay, and, uh, and therefore, uh, we learn really a lot about ourselves. So uh, the Word of God is very essential and because uh, the, the, uh, uh, it is a way of communication. Okay, now I look at number two, emphasize uh, with person and situation in which language inhibit communication. Empathize with person and situation in which language uh, inhibit communication. So therefore, um, uh, they are in this, in this uh, uh, community of faith we are talking about, okay, there are uh, people speak many different languages, okay. Uh, we're talking about uh, those who have been born again throughout this universe, and there are many different languages. And uh, the Bible, those people, all of us have the Bible written in our language, okay. It would be wonderful sometimes to be able to, to, to speak more than one language. But uh, many times we have to uh, help people to uh, receive the Word of God in their language, okay? Uh, third world countries, and that they need financial help, and uh, the Bible needs to be printed in their language and so forth. There's a lot of things we can do to help uh, uh, to communicate. Then our number uh, three, find ways to communicate with diverse uh, people and have common understanding. Boy, you know, we're talking about it. Uh, 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 helping to get the Bible, okay, uh, uh, written in their languages. So uh, we want everyone in this family, okay, to uh, be able to ha get this word, to understand this word, and it has to be written in their language, okay. So there's a lot of things that we can do to help. Now, uh, if look at this lesson for Sunday, and uh, we want to remember that uh, uh, this is what is called the uh, Sixth Dispensation. Okay, this is the Age of Grace. Law can't, is, uh, is coming to an end here. And uh, so uh, we're dealing now with the Church Age. This is a period of time between uh, the termination of uh, Christ's earthly ministry and His return during which God, who is no longer dealing with Israel nationally, as he did in the Old Testament time, uh, a purpose to call uh, out from among nations a peoples of his uh, name. Uh, this dissemination, which it was uh, initiated with the advent of the uh, Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, to dwell within the heart of believers in Christ, uh, and it will continue until the church is taken out for, uh, uh, at the rapture, Okay, in the fourth, fourth chapter of uh, 1 Thessalonians. Now, uh, keep in mind that as we study this lesson, and uh, we're dealing with this word, Pentecost. Now, uh, Pentecost is a word that is not found in the Old Testament. Uh, you find in the, in the uh, book of Leviticus, the, the 23rd chapter, and we encourage you to read that because you can find there the Feast of Weeks, okay? And uh, the Feast of Weeks was to be celebrated uh, 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 50 days after the Jews celebrated f uh, uh, First Fruit. Now, uh, First Fruit was a type of his resurrection. Okay, and then they had to count uh, seven Sabbaths, which would be uh, 49 days. And the next day after the 49th day, which would be 50 days, and notice it, it was on a Sunday. Okay. And uh, so in the New Testament, you see the word Pentecost, and uh, uh, Pentecost in the Greek means 50. So 50 days after the Lord, okay, resurrection, which had been 40, he had uh, been 40 days here on earth in the first chapter of Acts, giving them infallible proof, okay, that he was alive, that he was real. And uh, then he went back to heaven, but he told them to tarry. And uh, there in a room until they be uh, baptized, not many days hence by the Holy Spirit. So uh, ten days after, okay, he went back to heaven. Okay, in the second chapter of Acts, it was uh, the day of Pentecost, and that is when the Spirit of God 
baptize them into the body of Christ, okay, to form the church. And uh, so therefore, keep in mind that when we say baptize, means put in. Now, Holy Spirit baptism uh, puts you into, you don't join the body of Christ, okay, the Spirit of God puts you into it. And once the Spirit of God places you in it, then you never come out. Okay, but it's different from water baptism. Keep in mind that water baptism, you got to come out of that water. Okay, it's just a symbolic of what ever happened. Okay, to you when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. But uh, here, uh, when the day of Pentecost will fully come. Okay, now they had been looking for this. Uh, uh, this particular day uh, was a, a day that had been uh, looking forward to ever since. Okay, uh, uh, when you study the book of Leviticus. So now. It is, uh, remember the Lord said in the 16th chapter of, J of Matthew that he will build his church. So, uh, but there was the future. Now this event is being fulfilled. Okay, and more about that later. Okay, so therefore we encourage you to uh, read the uh, introduction to our lesson from the uh, adult quarterly, if, you, if this is what you're using. And uh, we encourage you also to read the uh, biblical uh, uh, content, okay, on page 69, and they give you a good setting for what is going to happen here on the day of Pentecost. Now, um, uh, as we look at this lesson, and as we say it, um, uh, please study the, um, the uh, devotional reading, and uh, please study the book of uh, Leviticus, the 19th chapter, because it's going to really help you to understand. So therefore, uh, uh, if you look at your adult quarterly, and uh, from the book of Acts, the uh, second chapter, verses 1 through 7, okay, and it says, uh, the gift of tongues is given. Now, when we look at this lesson, we want to remember that tongue is a language. It's not a mumbo-jumbo, uh, ecstatic talking, okay, but it is a language. And when you get to the book of uh, Corinthians, the 14th chapter, and you can see the word sometimes unknown. I notice that word unknown is written in the King James, it's written in italicized, which let you know that uh, it was not in the original uh, language, uh, in the original uh, 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 transcript. But, uh, uh, and they say tongue. So, uh, tongue is a language that uh, the Spirit of God uh, gave them to speak. They had never studied, okay, never learned it. And they're going to give someone the ability to interpret these languages that they had never studied. So, don't get the impression that, like some people say, they are uh, ecstatic, they are say mumbo jumbo stuff that they are not. Uh, 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 as a sign that you uh, uh, been baptized and so forth and so on. But uh, this is the way that God fixed it so the word of God will be spread throughout, okay, the uh, world through different languages. Keep that in mind. So here uh, the, the uh, print of our lesson says, and when the day of Pentecost will fully come, they will all in, uh, with one accord in one place. Now, uh, when you study the Old Testament, okay, the day of Pentecost uh, was one of those feast days when all the Jewish men had to go to Jerusalem, okay, that was uh, uh, the first uh, 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 day they had to go was uh, uh, the day of, um, of um, uh, they had to celebrate uh, his, uh, his, his death and uh, the feast of, of uh, unleavened bread. Okay. And uh, uh, then they had to stay there for uh, uh, 50 days to celebrate the feast of Pentecost. And then there was the third day they had to go. That was in the seventh month. Okay. The feast of uh, Tabernacle. But here they would go to Jerusalem and be there for the 15th day of, of uh, Nisan, and uh, then they had to stay there until uh, the uh, uh, fifth day of Pentecost, 50 days later. So now, on the day of Pentecost, there was uh, the Jews, men, 
It came from uh, throughout the Roman Empire, whatever the Jews had uh, had been scattered at first, okay, the men would go. And uh, so while they were there, okay, it says, uh, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a worship mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. This reason why we need to go back and read uh, the 19th chapter of Leviticus and the 4th chapter of Deuteronomy in our uh, uh, devotion to read it. Because the same way God appeared miraculous, okay, to them uh, at, at uh, Mount Sinai, okay, and uh, here they were there, and uh, then they say the uh, 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 and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rush of mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting, and they appeared unto them cloven like tongues of fire, and it set up on each one of them. Get the picture here, that uh, here. There was uh, 12 apostles and uh, uh, 120 uh, other people in the room. And uh, when they came down, okay, um, uh, they were able to speak. And uh, all the people that came from uh, different countries, they could understand what they were saying in their languages. Okay, now remember those apostles, okay, didn't really speak all those different languages, literally. But uh, the Spirit of God, okay, enabled those people to hear them in whatever language they spoke, okay. It was just like uh, cloven like tongues of fire divided, and the Spirit gave them, and the Spirit gave them utter. Look at that full verse. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, which means the Spirit of God had complete control of them, and began to speak with other tongues or other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them uttering the ability to do so. And that fifth verse say, And there were dwelling in Jerusalem of okay, the Jew devout men out of every nation under heaven. And what happened? Now when uh, this was uh, noticed uh, no, uh, uh, abroad, the multitude came together and was confounded. And you and me would be the same way, confused. Here uh, you are hearing them speaking, and uh, you didn't speak the language that they spoke, and they didn't speak the language you spoke, but yet and still you was understanding, okay, what they were saying in your own language. So they was confounded. They were confused. Why? Because every man heard them speak in their own language. Okay. So remember, we say these are languages now. It says, uh, and they were all amazed, and they marvelous, saying, One to another, behold, are not all of these which speak Galilean? Okay, now, uh, Galilean, okay, uh, upper part of uh, Palestine there, okay, they spoke a different language. They even uh, had a different dialect than uh, those that was in uh, Jerusalem. And here these people came from all the other countries, and uh, now they could understand what they were saying. So then when we get to the uh, 12th verse, and they were all amazed and was in doubt, saying one to another, what means this? Now go back to your subject. Okay, it didn't make sense to them. Okay, nonsense. But it had to, uh, nonsense had to be made sense. And uh, so therefore, uh, it is very essential. You see, God uh, uh, have a way of, uh, of uh, teaching us so we can understand things about his word that really don't make sense, okay? But when you study God's word and led by the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God illuminates your understanding, and as we said previously, that which didn't make sense, now it began to make sense, okay? You died. You would bear it. He really resurrected from the dead, Okay? And because he lived, then the same thing ain't gonna happen to us. Now we say, well, that just don't make sense. Honestly, people just don't believe it. But when you study God's word, and you see how God is a miracle-working God, okay? God knows the ending before the beginning, and He said in forty-six chapter of Isaiah, and I do everything that I counsel my prophets to write. Okay, who can you compare me to? No one. Okay, He is God. Beside Him. There's none other. So if you could understand everything about God, then God wouldn't be no more than you or me. Okay? But we have to, when we study God's Word, and, uh, and uh, study it, reread it, study it, 
And then we come to the conclusion, there are many things I don't really comprehend, but I believe it because he said it. So really, when you start talking about the uh, uh, rapture of the church, okay, go, going back to the dust, and uh, the Bible says, okay, he going to come, there going to be a shout, there going to be a voice from an archangel, the dead in Christ going to rise, those mollusk pews going to come back to the going back to the dust, huh? and uh, uh, give us a glorified body. Well, uh, you might say, well, and the other says that that don't make sense. I don't believe. Well, it don't make sense to them. But when you study God's word and realize who you're dealing with, oh, they, then it does make sense. Okay, I don't have a problem with it. I believe it. Okay, and uh, so when we get to the uh, second part of our lesson and dealing with the tongues, okay, uh, from the book of uh, uh, Corinthians, it's from your uh, adult quality. Say, tongue must be in in uh, intelligible. Uh, to the speaker, tongue, languages, must be, okay, uh, intelligent uh, to the speaker. So therefore, uh, uh, and we're going to see why, okay, it's not a, 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 a mumbo jumbo, okay, remember we say it, not aesthetic, this is a language, okay, and uh, uh, there have been so many different interpretations about speaking in tongue, okay, and uh, here in the book of uh, uh, Corinthians, and uh, some people think that uh, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, okay, and he places his spirit in you, you're going to need a second baptism, and that means speaking something that, uh, uh, in a language that uh, you don't understand, other people don't understand, and they say, well, that's the second baptism, he's speaking in a tongue. Well, the Bible don't know anything about that, okay? So here, I say, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul now right into this church at Corinth because there was a problem. Okay, he said, "Wherefore, let him that speaketh in a now notice uh, in your uh, in your adult quarterly, uh, you have uh, tongue written in italicized and unknown tongue written in in the uh, regular uh, language, but uh, it should be reversed. Okay, unknown should be in italicized." It says, uh, wherefore, let him that speaketh in a unknown uh, uh, language speak that he may, uh, pray that he may interpret. Okay. He's speaking in a language that he had never spoken before. He in church, other people listening. And he said, but you pray that you may be able to interpret what you are saying. Okay. And uh, because if I, if, you don't, if, if, if I don't understand what you are saying, then you and I'm not being edified, okay? I'm not being built up, okay? And I cannot say amen because I don't know what you're talking about. So this is what Paul is uh, getting over here to the people. For Note that 14th verse. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, prays but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, what is he saying? If I pray, okay, in a language that you don't understand what I'm saying, okay, now God understand, okay, uh, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful, okay. You are not, you see, in this, in the body of Christ, we should be building up and um, uh, uh, one another. And uh, we should be encouraging one another. But if I don't know what you're saying, okay, then how can you be, we can be building up one another. Now, God knows whatever language you are speaking, okay. Now, uh, 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 when I was uh, uh, working and a friend of mine as a pastor, he went taking a trip to California. And uh, he uh, sat on a pastor out there for two weeks. And he said, this pastor taught him how to speak in tongue. And he came back and he was teaching his, teaching his church members how to speak in tongues. I said, what's the purpose? He said, so uh, uh, they need to learn a language where the God and the angels understood. I said, wait a minute now. You mean to tell me that God don't understand English? And uh, 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 you teaching them to uh, say things that they don't understand so God can understand? See, uh, God understands all languages, okay? So here he says, a, uh, uh, in that 15th verse, what, what is it then? 
if I pray in the Spirit, with the Spirit, I will pray with an understanding also. I was saying with the Spirit, I was saying with an understanding also. That verse is saying so much. What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. Okay, now, uh, your NIV saying that this is with man's spirit, but I believe this is with the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, and I will pray with an understanding. Okay, uh, uh, if you're praying and don't understand, Okay, if you are singing and don't understand what you are saying, and that's one thing that we have to be awful careful, I feel like, in our worship service today. Many times, uh, our songs, uh, the, uh, uh, I just don't understand sometimes what is being said, okay? We'll start the, uh, 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 clapping with the, uh, with, the, with the beat, petting our toe-tapping with the uh, music, clapping out of a hand but even before they start singing. And uh, then when they start singing, uh, I don't understand the words, okay? So if I don't understand the words, how can I be enjoying the uh, music? Now, music is a part of our worship service. But I feel like the song should be, should be very uh, uh, audible and understood by the listeners, praising God. I feel that one of... Uh, 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 Satan's greatest things is our, our, our hymnology. For many of our hymnology is not biblical, okay? They are entertaining. So therefore, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church here that he will pray with, an with the Spirit, and there's so he's going to pray with an understanding. He's going to sing with the Spirit, and he's going to sing with an understanding also. And then look at uh, the last part, of the, uh, uh, 14 through uh, chapter 16 through 19. Tongue must be, must be, or intelligible to the hearers. Okay? Look what he said. Or uh, else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit. Okay? Bless me when you are praising God. Okay? Uh, I want you to go back and read the book of Nehemiah. Uh, the eighth and in the uh, ninth chapter is uh, when uh, Ezra, the priest, when he uh, 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 explained the word of God that had been found in the temple. And those people that came out of the captivity, they had never uh, uh, read or heard the law of God, the word of God. And when uh, they, uh, Ezra, the, uh, uh, they built a platform for him to stand so the people could see him and had uh, uh, seven people on one side and six on the other side that understood the language that as uh, Ezra reading, he was explaining it to the people. But first thing Ezra did, it said that he blessed God. He talked about and praised God for God had, what God had done to the nation for the nation of Israel how he had taken care of them in Egypt, how he had brought them uh, out of Egypt, miraculous, and how he had brought them across the Red Sea, provided for them, and he blessed God. He talked about what God had done for them. And then uh, the people said, Amen, Amen. They could understand that. But when he got into it and uh, reading the word, they had never heard the word before. And then when they begin to read the word and they begin to explain it to them while they can understand it, then they see the people start to cry because they realize how far they had got away from God when they read the word. And he had done one, it's not a time for crying. You're learning, okay? Praising God that you got another chance. So therefore, okay? And he said, made them understood. My friends, when you preach and teach the word of God where a person can understand. It's not that someone say that you did a good job. But I understood it. When you can look at over the order and you see people uh, uh, taking notes. Okay. Using a Bible. And then they come and say, I understood it. 
But if they don't understand, how can they say amen? Look at what Paul said here. If, when thou bless God with the, uh, with the Spirit, how shall he be, that occupied uh, the room of the unlearned say amen? Okay, how can you say, if you are unlearned and don't understand what being said, how can you say amen? At the giving of thanks, seeing he understand not what thou sayest. Now, this is me. This is Armstrong. And I feel that when you got to tell people to say amen, and many times we get up and we say, say amen, and you haven't said a word. Say amen again, and you still haven't said a word. And then when you tell people that uh, 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 say amen, and they say amen because you told them to, not because they understood it. Amen mean you sanction it. I know what you're saying is true. Amen is a part of the church language. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But when you say amen, you should be saying it because you know a person is telling the truth. If you're learning, how can you say amen? If you don't know the person is saying the truth, how can you say amen? Then know what Paul said. For thou verily give thanks well, but uh, other are not edified. Then he said, I thank my God. I speak with a tongue, a language more than you all. Now, tradition say, this is not biblical. Tradition say that Paul could speak 14 different languages. But Paul says here, I thank God that I can speak uh, was more languages than any of you all. Yet in the church, I'd rather speak five words with an understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Five words that the church would understand. Then 10,000 words that they don't understand. Understanding. Speaking so people can understand. How can you be edified? How can you say amen if you don't understand? The lesson end by saying, the need for the ability to be intelligibly communicated. Okay, the gospel uh, to a uh, growing numbers of diverse group of peoples cannot be overemphasized uh, in our uh, uh, shrinking world environment. The church must seek to aid uh, the aid of the Holy Spirit uh, in international de uh, developed ways to overcome barriers of effective communication in order to win peoples of every tongue and nation to Christ. We must go ye therefore into all the world. Teach them. Think about all of these people that had came from various countries on the day of Pentecost. Now they had to go back home. Now they had understood. Now they can make sense out of nonsense. Now they can tell those people where they came from about the saving power of Jesus Christ. They can tell them what they had learned about his death, burial, and resurrection. Because when they, uh, uh, the Spirit of God gave the apostles the ability to speak, stand up and speak, and the Spirit of God uh, uh, gave them the ability to hear in their own languages. They understood. They went back home. They spread the gospel. Jesus Christ died for your sin. He was buried. He rose again for your justification. 
they understood. This is a wonderful lesson. Too many times. We are living in an age where we want to be so intellectual. And we're leaving out the people who cannot understand and do not have a great secular education. But the Apostle Paul said, I didn't come to preaching to you with enticing words of man wisdom. But I came with you preaching the simple truth of Jesus Christ and him crucified. My friend, when you speak so the uh, 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 uneducated can understand what you're saying. The educated know. But when you want to give your uh, message to the educated and leave the uneducated out. then you are not speaking for people to understand what you're saying. Story is told that the later um, the pastor came, a new pastor came to town. And in this household, uh, one of the church, where one, some of the church members lived, there was an elderly lady, grandmother. And she was the only one that went to church that Sunday morning. She came home, they asked her, how was the preacher, the new preacher, could he preach? And she says, uh, I don't know, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Say, I carried the wrong book. I carried my Bible when I should have had the dictionary. I didn't understand anything he said. He used words there over my head. So maybe he did preach. But I didn't understand that. But if he had spoke to the, so she could understand, then all of those educated people's could understand it as well. Understanding. It's the greatest thing about the Word of God. Teach, preach, so the average person can understand what is being said. May God bless you. May He keep you. And we hope to see you in Sunday school Sunday morning.